Hello everybody, I'm Dan. Welcome to my Java tutorial series. Throughout my tutorials I will teach you Java using just Notepad and the command prompt. The order in which my tutorials are organized on both my website at javacjava.com and my YouTube playlist is designed to maximize learning by building on concepts from prior tutorials. This tutorial is how to rethrow an exception. I'm going to open up my uh, web browser to my website, javacjava.com, select begin. I'm going to scroll all the way down here to the Rethrowing an exception. Now there may be occasions where you want to catch an exception, then determine if it can be handled properly, and if not, rethrow the exception to be handled further down the call stack. Now the example code for this tutorial will create a method that expands the capabilities of the parseInt method in the integer class. So consider the following method here. I've got the it's called string to int, and I pass it a string parameter. Uh, it receives a string parameter, has a string parameter, I should say, and returns back a primitive int data type. Okay? So in the first statement, I just simply initialize the primitive int variable i equal to zero. And then I go ahead and try, and I enclose our risky, um, risky code, this risky statement inside the try here, and set, um, inv set i equal to the return value from the integer class invoking the parse int method, right? And that'll basically pass whatever string we get in here. Okay, so let's come up here in case you're not familiar with the uh, parse int method. Let's come here to the integer class here, right? And um, the parse int method is right here, okay? So basically it parses the string argument as a signed decimal integer, right? And it returns it back as a um, primitive data type int. So let's click on this down here, and that'll take us to more of the description there. So it will throw a number format exception if the string does not contain a parsable integer, right? So basically, it uh, you could send in a string that has, like, for example, um, quotes, and then the number one, right? And then another quote there for that string literal. Um, so what I wanted to do is go ahead and kind of expand that so that we can pass in actually, like, spelled out stuff like, O N E, right, and that'll convert it back to one in this particular case. So I'll let it do the work here for me. So if someone were to pass in, like, say, quote, and then the number one right here, the integer parsing will go ahead and change I for me properly there. And now, however, um, parsing will throw a number format exception if it can't if it can't do anything with it. So inside of the the catch statement here, what we're gonna what I'm gonna do is have a switch statement that's going to evaluate the uppercase um, value of the parameter of string s here, right? And then it'll just check to see, you know, if it's case one, it'll go ahead and return one right back out of there, you know, one and two and three and all the way down the line there, right? Otherwise, you know, basically, if we get something in here that we can't handle, right, it'll go ahead and call and go ahead and invoke this statement, which is throw e. Now, this is how you rethrow an exception here. So our number format exception comes in and it's basically stored into this reference variable right here. It's number format exception is a class and it's an object at this point when it's thrown like that. So we can simply rethrow it here by calling throw and e. So that's how you rethrow an exception. So um, this method can take arguments like one, right? And that'll be handled by the parse int, no problem. A number format exception won't even occur here. It'll just simply return i value back there. You can also take one, 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 etc. You know, and convert them all to a primitive int value. So let's go ahead and scroll down here to the source code here. Let's highlight all this stuff here and Control C to copy, or right click and select copy. All right, I'm gonna move my browser off screen now. I've got a shortcut to the command prompt on my desktop, but if you don't, you can create one really fast by selecting New Shortcut. Type in CMD next and finish, right? It's just that easy. Let's go ahead and open this up. Let's type in Java C, which is a Java compiler command. You should see all this stuff scroll by. Now, however, if you receive an error message, watch my tutorial on installing the Java development kit. You want to make sure you get that installed and configured properly before continuing. Okay, then CD space backslash CD is short for change directory and backslash tells it to go to the root. Now I'm going to make a directory here called Java and using the MD command. I already have that folder, but if you don't, it'll go ahead and create it for you. Change directories to the Java folder. And I'm going to make another directory here, and I'm just gonna call this uh, exception rethrow. OK, 
Okay, and we'll change directories to the exception rethrow folder. I'm on notepad exception rethrow dot java. And I'm gonna go ahead and paste in the source code here. So let's come up here and save this here. And um, basically here's our main method entry point here. And I made this little, uh, well actually let's come down here to the two string int there. Basically we've got the same stuff going on here, only I finished out one through nine, right? On the return on that. And so if something comes in that doesn't, um, doesn't match any of the numbers or the spelled out numbers one through nine, right? It's going to go ahead and not return anything, right? It's going to fall through the switch statement and come down here to throw E where we'll re-throw the exception here, okay? So that's what will occur there. All right, so let's come up here to this new method that I created here, which is display our int, right? And it takes a string parameter called parse int, and you can see how it's being called up here, right? Display our int, and then we pass the string literal that we want to parse out, right? Okay, so the sole purpose of this is to display this to the console there. So I've got uh, int i initialized to zero, and, and I'm trying. Um, first thing I'm doing is enclosing the try statement here, and I'm invoking the string to int method, and I'm passing in our string parameter here. Now we should receive an i back, right? Um, an integer value, primitive integer value back, and then I'm just going to display that to the console here as long as we're successful. Now if this goes off on an exception because we re-threw it down here, then I'm going to catch it again, right, and just simply display this string literal to the console here, right, and then of course plus the parse value right in the middle, unable to convert in whatever it is to a primitive int. So let's go ahead and run this and see what we what happens here? So let's clear our screen. Java C, compile it, and let's go ahead and run it. And so here's what we get. So right off the bat, unable to convert zero to a primitive int. And you can see I have zero spelled out in here, but you'll notice I only did one through nine here, right? So um, in just right off the bat there, you know, obviously, this threw an exception, we caught the exception, now we tested zero, which is our our parameter coming through here, right? And passed all the way down through here, so it didn't match any of these, so we weren't able to return back that, so then we re-threw the exception down here, E, and that came up back up here and just displayed unable to convert that. Okay, so hopefully that makes complete sense on that. And then we've got the numbers one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, Right, one, two, three, four, five, six, and then you'll notice I actually just did the seven there, right, and then the seven here. Now when I passed, when I specified this string literal for an argument, and that came in through here, right, and then we um, passed that as an argument over to the string to int method here, that would have actually not even produced a an exception right there, right? This would have just said I, right? Catch wouldn't have even, um, gone into effect and it simply would have returned that back. And maybe a good way to, to do that is to show you, it's just like, okay, let's, um, I'll just put in a, uh, like an asterisk, right? And as a matter of fact, I won't do a print line, I'll just do a print, right? Okay. So what this will do is this will display an asterisk anytime this particular, anytime it got caught in this particular thing right here, right? Okay, let's come back up here and save this and let's just go ahead and recompile this. Let's clear our screen. Uh, let's run it here. Okay, so you could see that anytime it went into that first exception call there, it basically displays an asterisk, right? And then so you can see seven, eight, and nine on those ones right there, right? Those were actually handled no problem by the parse int method right here. No exception was thrown up there, okay? All right, so that's basically how you rethrow an exception. Simply uh, use the uh, throw statement here, the throw keyword, and then um, 
just pass the reference variable and then set the reference variable right after that and then a semicolon. It's just that simple there, right? And E, of course, is the reference variable that's a pointing to the number format exception object. And that will re-throw it basically up the call stack. So, um, you know, this particular, when we're invoking this particular method right here, right, that's where the error will come out. Because you'll notice it doesn't even execute this line. So then it comes out to the number format exception and does the unable to convert. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and clear this off, clear that off. I'm gonna leave you guys with some final thoughts here. So now if you've been following my tutorial series, you may have noticed that there are quite a few tutorials on exception handling. Exception handling is an important topic and quite frankly, in my humble opinion, is not given enough attention by many in the Java community. Now I plan on making a few more tutorials on exception handling before I move on to another subject. That concludes this tutorial. Thanks for watching.